So this is what the room looks right now in the Imperial room. It's completely empty because it's 9.40 right now, so it's not opening yet, but there are already a lot of people upstairs um, registering for their tickets, I guess. Just making sure that they have their badges. It took me a, a little bit of trouble to find the bus here, but um, I managed to get here uh, five minutes late, which is pretty good, and not that many people are here anyways. I'm, I'm supposed to meet my the rest of the um, AV team, but no one's here yet. I saw one person, but she had to go get Red Bull because she was sleep deprived just like me. I, I was not able to get that much sleep last night. I think maybe because I was just too excited about it, but, um, yeah, I'm just sitting here waiting, but I'm excited. So they worked out what happened with the volunteering. Nobody, nobody showed up and they told me to meet them at the Imperial Room, so then, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so then they, they just pointed me out to go to the, to the training. And it was very, very informative. I, I, I liked it a lot. And the person that, the person that did a really, did a really good job, did a really good job, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm hanging out with my friend right here. He's cosplaying as one as a as a lol character. Timo. Timo. I don't know who I, I don't know who that is because I you don't play lol. I don't play lol. Um, and we're in line to get our we're in line to get our tickets now because and we have to wait like everyone else does. We should be treated better. We're volunteers. I'm just kidding. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I don't have a shift until 3 p.m. So, so we're just going to explore, and we're gonna, we're hopefully going to meet Ellen McLean, who plays Glados on um, Portal. Oh, oh, we're almost there. This is the line for Ellen McLean. We're waiting to see Glados. I hope that we make it in. I think we'll make it in. So we're deciding we're deciding our schedule right now because we're trying to get the most out of our first day. It's in spring game, so hopefully that's a big room. I thought that was the room that we were just in. That's a small room. No. Oh, okay. I don't remember. I hope. I want my autograph though. Did you leave? Did you leave this up here by accident? Oh my goodness. Things are just going down the toilet here. Hey guys. How many people have seen me in Pacific Rim? Yes, twice. Have you seen my massive thighs? <laughs> I'm very, I'm very proud of my massive thighs and my tiny little waist. <laughs> she had and to I, work out so hard for me. <laughs> and I like my little sort of Ooh, yeah, come on winglet, you know, shoulder blade things. But I, I, yes, it is. I mean, basically, she, she ate nothing but steel ingots for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ross. And you are going to enjoy that book. Or GLaDOS will like. <laughs> it, is, it is a wonderful, wonderful read, particularly if you like science fiction. I would say it's in the, you know, Robert Heinlein, certainly in that tradition, Robert Heinlein. All eyes. Okay. <laughs> Yay. So you want me to sign this too? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I'm not surprised. in this game. I'm just very <laughs> okay. Yes, but he's the, re he's the reason that I'm in that game. Because for years, you know, he, when we moved to Seattle in 89, he got a voice demo and he said, Ellen, get a demo. Get a demo. Get a demo. I said, no, no. Oh, no, no. I don't hear the right voice. They don't hire no, women. They don't, they don't hire women. Yeah, 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 yeah. So finally in 2002, when I was between engagements, as we say. Ooh. I finally yes, got a voice demo, and I like immediately got work. Ooh. See? So See? I'm always wrong. Don't type yourself out. <laughs> I don't want you guys saying at the, the voice actor panel, oh no, I'm too gay, they won't hire gay. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Get a voice demo. And that's really your name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
conventions. Uh, my team does all the social media. We do all the, the forums and the moderation. Um, and we do fan feedback, um, which we'll actually be talking about on a different panel tomorrow. Um, and yeah, that's my job. I was actually having a conversation with someone today about invisible communities and um, how to represent those. And I was like, well, most people think that community manager is just the person who is tweeting out photos. But, and probably in a lot of companies that is exactly what they do. But for me, I don't see my role as that. I, I come from an academic background before I got my job at Bioware um, accidentally. I, yeah, I, I was um, I was in London um, writing on uh, material and visual culture, things you can touch and things you can see. And I, so I, I come from a research background. I come from academia, and I think that community is just a catch-all term, unfortunately. And so my team doesn't even really do community, which translates to marketing and PR. My team really is all about building the Bioware culture. And the most important thing to me is representing those people who otherwise wouldn't have a voice at the table. Because those people are really important to, to us and to the developers. To not, not just, even though maybe you know, the marketing team has their objectives for what kind of demographics they want to hit, that's not necessarily uh, a one-to-one -one correlation at all to who my team is trying to reach. And I think that everyone is, is important, but it's really important to me personally, uh, as someone who has done a lot with um, marginalized communities in, in my own work as an anthropologist and archaeologist, that it's important to come to these places and talk to fans and let them know not only are we listening, but we are listening to you. So that's, that's me. Around the fact that this this car salesman dude could have a heart of gold, right? You're missing and that if he just had your back, that that could make him like have like of all the characters we have in D two, maybe it would be good for that to have one friend, one real friend. And then it was like, oh, that's a really good thing. Why are you trying writing with that? And, and it just sort of grew to there. So it's it's kind of hard sometimes when you're writing to know where your inspiration actually came from. It's just it's just a. Uh, Every character you write is part of you to a degree. Alistair is part of me, Morgan, uh, but also Shale. <laughs> and those, those might seem like really different characters, but yeah, there, there, there is a, an element, element of me that, that sort of uh, uh, that that they, where they they grew out of it. I can't I can't explain it better than that. It's just that uh, you have you, you dig into your experience a little bit, and, and you get a kernel, and the rest of it just comes. I, I, I want people to know that I see what you see when you go online. I see the vitriol, the the hate, the just outright bigotry. And I want you to know that we are actively working on putting that to an end. That I, no, I no, wish... bigotry itself. I, I mean... I, I don't want to, you know, shoot for the shoot for the the moon or the sun or whatever. We're talking about the experience of life, stars, right? yeah. whatever. The way people communicate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, no, I hear you. I see it, and it because things take a lot of time to develop and get going, and to do it the right way, it seems like a long time, but. For the one person who did take that survey, and um, the rest of you who are really unhappy with the, the state of things online, I want you to know that we are not ignoring that, and we hate it just as much, if not more, than you do. And There's a lot of good stuff.